So I'm going to talk about guide wires. This could be your most important decision. I think, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about chronic total occlusions, how to get through them, how to manage PAD patients, treat them and work them up and, and how to treat them afterward medically, etc. But we don't spend a lot of time on guide wires and I think this is a very important thing that uh, really needs to be addressed. Usually when I talk about guide wires, this is what I get. I get my fellows fall asleep. And uh, this is a, is a great picture I got from Craig Walker um, at, from NCVH. And, and I think it really shows why we don't talk about guide wires more often. But you really need to understand guide wires if you're going to do things like this. In the middle image, I'm doing a subintimal recanalization with a catheter and a guide wire. In the far right image, I'm basically performing a pedal loop um, access and recanalization, again, with a balloon and a guide wire. So guide wires are very important, as we all know. If you've never seen a CTO, this is what we're talking about. This is a CTO under a microscope, and you can see the black arrows are pointing to the tiny microchannels that we're trying to access when we perform a recanalization of a chronic total occlusion. And this is where the so-called guide wire escalation comes from, 014 to 018 to 035, because you're trying to access these channels of varying sizes, and depending on what's happening real time, helps you determine what you need to do in your guide wire selection. Another important concept when dealing with CTOs is whether you have a hibernating lumen, which is angiographically occult, or a non-hibernating lumen. Obviously, you, all CTOs have proximal and distal caps, and when you have a patent channel in between, that is a so-called hibernating lumen. It is a much easier recanalization compared to the non-hibernating lumen, which is occluded from proximal to distal. But again, understanding this concept will really help you when trying to determine guide wire selection. An important classification when dealing with CTOs is the CTOP classification or CTOP system, which was described by Fadi Saab and his team. Basically, it showed that there are four main types of CTO shapes based on their proximal and distal caps. And you can see here that depending on whether you have a CTOP type 1, 2, 3, or 4, you can see that based on the morphology of the cap, your guide wire is likely to either start intraluminal, start subintimal, which then helps you to determine what guide wires you may need during the course of the procedure. And so it's a very important concept to understand when selecting guide wires. Another important feature about CTOs is the fact that you, you may also deal with heavy calcification as well as tortuosity. And this can also determine what type of guide wire you may need. And so understanding some basics of guide wires can be really helpful when dealing with PAD, but also with patients who specifically have critical limb ischemia. So when it comes to guide wires, they're really classified into three main categories. And this is what it looks like when you pull a package or a brochure from various companies. And pretty much every company classifies them in these various names. The first category are frontline navigation or workhorse guide wires. These are guide wires to get you someplace, to manage tortuosity and to select various vessels. The second category are specialty CTO or crossing wires. These are wires typically with higher tip loads or tip loads starting from low to medium to high. And these are wires that are used to cross CTOs and to deal with non-calcified and calcified caps. Then the third category, obviously, are delivery and support guide wires. These are guide wires that basically let you deliver a balloon or atherectomy or a stent to complete therapy. And these guide wires can be either 014, 018, and 035. When you look at some of the guide wires that are classified as frontline navigation or workhorse guide wires, here you go. You can see these are coming from various companies, whether it's Abbott to Terumo to Boston Sci to Asahi, etc. And it doesn't really matter whether you know every single name. The idea here is you want to find what set of guide wires work for you. There may be some people who love the Command 14 and Command 18, but then others will tell you, well, I like the V14 and V18 from Boston Sci instead. That's okay. It's fine. The idea is that you don't need to be an expert at every single guide wire in this list. You just have to understand some of them and become an expert at those uh, while you're treating patients with PAD or CLI. 
Obviously, here's a list of some of the common specialty or CTO or crossing guide wires. You can see here, these are names you've all heard, but again, you don't have to know all of them. Just understand the ones that you're good at and have an idea of how to use them. Finally, you've got a, a list of some of the more common delivery or supportive guide wires. And you can see, again, various names. But remember, any guide wire can be used as a delivery guide wire if it allows you to safely deliver a balloon, an atherectomy device, re-entry device, stent, etc. So any guide wire that allows you comp to complete therapy safely can be considered a delivery guide wire. So when you really look at guide wires, they're really broken down into various components and then they all have various features. And this is something that you could spend hours and hours studying and talking about. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on what I think are some important basics that you should know about guide wires as you become experts uh, in this area. Remember that guide wires have various polymer coverings and hydrophilic and non-hydrophilic coatings. The more hydrophilic the guide wire, the more slippery it is. It likes to find micro channels, but then you also get less tactile feedback and there's obviously a higher chance for dissection and perforation. And oftentimes these are better for CTOs less than three months. Guide wires can also have hydrophobic coatings, meaning coatings that repel water. This feature re results in reduced friction, increases device trackability, and oftentimes these guide wires have good tactile feedback which really improves your ability to better navigate through a CTO and through the micro channels within a CTO. Oftentimes, operators will say that these are better for CTOs that are more fibrotic and calcified. Two important points related to guide wires are guide wire strength and guide wire tip load. If you realize that the strength of a guide wire is related to the radius to the fourth power, now when you escalate from 014 to 018, you've increased the strength of that guide wire almost three times. That's a significant increase. Now imagine if you go from 014 to 035, you can see how you've increased the strength and pushability of a guide wire uh, significantly. Guide wire tip load, what does that mean? Well, that's the minimum grams of pressure needed to deflect the distal one centimeter of a guide wire two millimeters. And this is a really important concept. As you see here, I've put videos of guide wires that are low, medium, and high tip loads. The video to the far left is a low tip load guide wire, so you can see there's more prolapse or more bending of the tip of the guide wire. On the other hand, with the medium tip load guide wire, you still get some prolapse, but not as much as the low tip load. And on the far right, in, when you're looking at the, one of the higher tip load guide wires, there's almost no prolapse at all. And these are great for getting through CTOs, but you have to be careful because these are more likely to dissect and cause perforations. Another important concept is realize that there are various CTO catheters. And although I didn't talk about those, I think it's important that you study the various CTO catheters from various companies while you're learning about guide wires because this will help you when dealing with CTOs in general. As you can see here on the video on the far left, I'm using a Terumo 4 French Navi cross catheter in this case, and I'm performing a technique called Navi bossing. Basically, I am pushing and dissecting through an SFA CTO and using tactile feedback to determine if I've perforated outside the vessel or the artery. On the middle and the far right videos, you can see that I really have to understand guide wire characteristics because I need lower tip load guide wires, as in this case, where I'm performing a technique called knuckle wire. And this is where I'm basically pushing a guide wire and creating a knuckle in order to dissect through a CTO. So understanding guide wire components and features can really help you with uh, CTO crossing, obviously. One thing to realize when you're dealing with CTOs is that you may use one guide wire at the proximal cap, another guide wire in the middle of the CTO, and a third guide wire to cross the distal cap or possibly re-enter into the true lumen from a subintimal uh, space. So you, you got to realize that one guide wire may not let you cross the entire CTO from start to finish, and that's a very important concept. But the bottom line is there's no perfect guide wire. There's no perfect escalation strategy. It really comes from studying these guide wires, using them, talking to experienced operators, and coming up with your own idea uh, of what works for you for crossing CTOs and dealing with patients with PAD and critical limb ischemia. Thank you and good luck. Thank you.